My grandmother, Chong Ying Ling Wong, is one of the many Chinese immigrants to experience positive change by coming to America from Hong Kong. And here's her story. During the 1950s and 60s, Hong Kong was undergoing an economic boom. Industrial and construction needs pushed the British colony towards modernization. The results of this included higher rates of crime, separation between the rich and poor, and political corruption. Life was not very good for many citizens in Hong Kong, and as refugees crossed over from China to the British colony, an abundance of uh, Hong Kong citizens were looking to the Western world. My grandmother, her husband, and five kids decided to leave Hong Kong in 1967 to come to the U.S. Chinese immigration, however, began long before my grandmother and her family decided to come to America. The California Gold Rush of 1848 to 1855 yielded the first great wave of Chinese immigrants, mainly young men who were determined to return to China after making their fortunes. At the beginning, when gold was abundant, Chinese workforces faced little to none animosity from American miners. But as the competition naturally increased, racism and hatred towards these immigrants followed. When Chinese immigrants were forced out of the mining business, they settled in ethnic enclaves where they found work in restaurant and laundry businesses. Although the Chinese were no longer part of the mining industry, California G Governor John Bigler blamed the Chinese for depressing wage levels within the state. However, at the beginning of World War II, China had become a U.S. ally, and the Magnuson Act of 1943 was put into place, reversing the Exclusion Act. The Magnuson Act permitted Chinese immigrants to become naturalized citizens, but the Act also approved a ban against the ownership of property and businesses by the Chinese. In addition to this, the Act only granted 105 Chinese immigrants entry visas into the U.S. each year. What did you do for a living in the U.S.? I Boston to uh, what hardships did you face when you came to the U.S.? Uh, so you may some food. Um, what was life like in the U.S. compared to Hong Kong? They be be Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, What did you like about the U.S.? Everything What didn't you like? Make one, make one sound with your I won't sell What did you expect life to be like in the U.S. when you came here? Made on make up, they numb you make up, sound with you. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 
and the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 provided the full benefits of immigration to Chinese. These new laws gave thousands of Chinese people opportunities to come to the United States each year to reunite with families and call for the social and racial equality of all Chinese Americans. The Chinese immigrants that came during the late 1800s and early 1900s all came from the same region of southern China, the Guangdong province. This allowed the Chinese populations to form strong communities to express traditions and culture without being alienated. These communities formed ethnic enclaves in large areas of cities, creating Chinatowns in places like Boston and New York. These immigrants built economic success in ethnic businesses like restaurants and laundries to serve an audience of other Chinese immigrants. Boston's Chinatown in the 60s and 70s underwent a lot of new changes, including advocacies and governing associations to help with the living arrangements and legal issues of the community. My grandmother's family immediately joined the Wong Family Benevolent Association in Boston Chinatown and were provided with help and jobs. Chinatown was open to a wide variety of occupations and economic opportunities in the growing garment district and the restaurant and laundry businesses. My grandmother found an occupation as a seamstress in the garment industry, working during the day and coming home to take care of her five children after school ended. What kind of things did the U.S. have that China could not offer? So, Today, Chinatown is recognized as the center of Chinese American life in New England. China's restaurants, bakeries, laundromats, and other businesses have had continued success over the past century. Although many older Chinese institutions and homes are still relevant in the area today, Boston's Chinatown is beginning to modernize as new big residential buildings with more spacious apartments are being constructed along with new storefronts. Chinatown already has the values of a common residential area to pair with these new buildings and condominiums, providing tenants with transportation through two bus lines, a YMCA, a traditional Chinese supermarkets, the wide variety of restaurants, and a fully functioning hospital.